Hello again. This time, I'm here to talk about this. A modern wireless Microsoft I.O. 1.1 with a supposed 3395, sold at $45. I found this browser in Taobao the other day, and while I have quite possibly the best wireless mouse on the market, a Defi Refi Pro, this is simply too interesting to not try. For those that don't know, the original Microsoft Optical mice, including the real mouse Optical, the 1.1a, and the Nintendo Mouse 3.0 were all legendary gaming mice back in the day with many gamers wearing by it. They all used the MLT-04 sensor, which for the time was a technical marvel, with no acceleration or angle snapping like the sensors of their day. However, it did suffer from a very low mass tracking speed and a maximum of 400 dpi. Some to this day still claim that the MLT-04 tracks better than top optical sensors, as it tracks diagonal movement differently. But this is not a can of worms that I'm not comfortable or knowledgeable enough to get into, so let's leave that for another day. In addition, the shapes Microsoft created had a massive influence on the industry. Most ergomites on the market today are often inspired or outright copies of the Saudi EC shape, which itself was inspired by the Nintendo Mouse 3.0. The 1.1 itself saw less clones, but recently the Ninjutsu Katana Superlite was an attempt in capturing the shape. With the history out of the way, let's get into the mouse itself. Let's start off with the weight and packaging. Unboxing is simple, it's just a literal box and it came with a questionable yet rare Ghost Recon Edition Steel Series QCK that was folded twice. So that means there are creases in it now and I can't actually use it. Furthermore, as I'm not a big fan of cloth pads, let's skip that. The mouse weighs 94 grams on my scale. Not a good start as I prefer something lighter, but let's continue. The charging cable seems to be some OEM paracord, and even this manages to have type C plugs, which can be set for some other mice. Stock feet are Teflon, not good. Luckily, I have some PDFE feet left over from my old Nintendo mouse days, so I just replaced them. No ring around the sensor, however, as I expect whoever made this can't afford or can't be bothered to add it to the mode. It's not too big of a deal, so I'll let it slide. Next, let's talk about the shape and dimension. 126 by 68.5 by 40 millimeters, or in normal people terms, this is a medium sized shape, with a hump right in the middle. I have no problem palming or clawing this mouse. I wouldn't say it's the safest shape though, as the sides of the mouse are sloped outward, whereas other mice slope inward or are just flat, making it feel bigger than it really is. Personally, I think this is my favorite envy shape, even better than the super light. Now for the click feel and build quality. Main clicks uses Omron blue dots, middle mouse click uses a Huano green dot, and the scroll wheel uses the Huano 10mm encoder. And the side buttons, one on the left and one on the right, both use random square switches. Impressive specs for something this cheap. However, they all feel kind of bad. Main clicks are okay. On my copy, mouse one has some pre-travel, but no post-travel. Also feels quite stiff. And mouse two is actually perfect. The scroll wheel has very defined steps and has no pre or post-travel on the click. In fact, the scroll wheel feels even better than my death adder, as I like something more defined. However, the wheel itself is quite deep into the shell, making it hard to scroll in-game, especially in Apex where I scroll up for tap strafes and scroll down to jump. Here's a sound test for those that care. The side buttons are atrocious, due to how the top shell and the side buttons are designed, where you basically push the entire side button into the shell and that actuates the switch on the PCB. Depending on where you press, the experience varies wildly, but bad nonetheless. Pressing at the front of the side button, there's already a lot of pre and post travel. But if you're pressing at the back, there is an ungodly amount of post travel so impressive that I have to show it to you. That's right, that's all post travel. The shell is very solid. Those that have experience with Microsoft mice would know, this thing is a tank. It feels very solid in hand and there's almost zero side flex. Now, the important part, the sensor implementation and in-game performance. Being a mouse this cheap with supposedly the best sensor on the market currently, the implementation is very important and this is where things can go horribly wrong. Taking the mouse apart, here's the first red flag I saw. It uses a TSLR8355 MCU. Unlike the Compaq's or Nordic MCUs used by most 3395 implementations, 
This mouse shares the same MCU as the Ninjutsu Sora, which has, to put it lightly, a poor repetition in the mouse community. But we can't knock it until we try it, so let's put it back together and maybe mod it later while we try it. DPI deviation is acceptable. For my very mediocre testing at 1600 DPI, it measures at around 1580, which is quite good. While DPI deviation isn't a real issue unlike what people try to say, just change the sense and game if it feels off, it does say something about the implementation. Paint test comes out fine, as expected of anything released after 2004. No angle snapping, no acceleration, and most importantly, no lens rattle. In mouse tester, however, something strange happens. Compared to the graphs with my death adder, at the peaks it's very clear that something is wrong. At first, I thought it was simply motion sync not being on. So I also did the test with a superlight, and something is clearly wrong with the implementation. With the superlight, while the lines aren't quite as clean as the death adder with motion sync, the posts come out a lot cleaner than the IO 1.1. In the software, which I'll get into later, there's no setting for turning motion sync on. However, the mouse does max out at 26,000 dpi, which is the max dpi for a 3395. This means two possibilities. One, they put a 3395 in this without knowing what motion sync is. Number two, they put something else and faked everything. Both options are equally terrifying. Regardless, this means the implementation here is a massive fail. In-game, it does feel more sluggish. But I can't tell if this is due to the poor implementation or due to the weight. Click timing weapons like the Wingman or the PK definitely felt harder to use, as I see myself under aim a lot more with this mouse. However, don't get me wrong, I still believe it is possible to perform with this mouse. Sensor implementation isn't as big of a deal as it's made out to be these days. Even poor implementations like these are completely usable. Battery life is quite good, lasts 3 to 4 days with ease since it has a massive 500 mA battery. Could be much longer with the RGB off, did I mention this thing as RGB? It does, with 8 songs as well. But with this being a Microsoft mouse, if you don't have it set to red like the OG, you're not a real gamer. Software is very mediocre, looks very OEM but gets the job done. I also had to go through quite a few hoops to get this, by the way. If you want, I can just DM you the link. Conclusion. $45 is quite the odd mouse, and at the end of the day, it really is just a mod. A decent mod to be fair, but a mod nonetheless. Bad burning build quality, mediocre software, poor implementation, and the weight makes it a very hard recommend. Only get this if you are the most dedicated IL 1.1 fan. If it was a good 20 grams lighter, this could be a pretty okay budget mouse. But right now, this is simply an oddity in my small collection.